the anatomy of a Creative Commons license. Creative Commons license by 4.0, David M. Bastido. Anatomy of a Creative Commons license. Licensed, Creative Commons by 4.0, David M. Bastido. Standard copyright operates by default under an all rights reserved approach. No one may, may use a copyrighted work without specific permission from the creator, which may or not, may not be granted. The creator typically needs to protect their work from alteration or protect their means of profiting from the work. No one may use their work in any way without their permission. Creative Commons licenses function within copyright law, but they utilize a some rights reserved approach. While there are several different Creative Commons license options, all of them grant the public permission to use licensed works under certain standardized conditions. The licenses grant these permissions for as long as the underlying copyright lasts or until you violate the copyright license terms. In other words, Creative Commons only functions while copyright functions. No copyright, no need for Creative Commons. This is what we mean when we say Creative Commons licenses work on top of copyright, not instead of copyright. The Creative Commons licenses were designed to be a free, voluntary solution for creators who want to grant the public upfront permissions to use their work. Although they are legally enforceable tools, they were designed in a way that was intended to make them accessible to non-lawyers, to the general public. In order to allow some rights reserved and others allow, Creative Commons licenses are built with four basic elements. As a creator, you may want to use any or all of these four qualifications to protect your work while allowing others to use your work as you dictate. So here are the four Creative Commons elements that may or may not be included in a license. The first element is the buy element. This gives attribution to the creator. In other words, this credits the creator with the work that they did to create. It's indicated by the circle with the by in it. The second possible element in a license is the no derivatives license, which indicates that no changes or alterations may be made in the work. This is indicated by the circle with an equal sign, or the ND. A work with this part in the license cannot be changed in any way. The third element is the SA, or share alike, indicated by the circle with a circular arrow in it, which requires future adaptations or changes to the work to use the same licensing elements as in the original license to the creative work. And the last element is the non-commercial element, or the NC, shown by the dollar sign with a circle strike through. When this is present, any future uses of the work cannot be used to earn anyone else money or make any sort of profit. Of these four, the SA element, or share alike element, is usually the most confusing. The SA license indicates that the person that uses your work must license their use of your work in the same way that you do. So if your license is includes share alike and also the non-commercial element, their license 
must use the non-commercial element as well. So when might you use this share-alike element? Only if you will allow others to alter your work. If they use your work unaltered, simply using it as is or sharing it as is, then your license stays intact with the work. You can force any sharing or use to be unaltered by using the no derivatives element, or the ND. Without ND, your work can be used and changed. When altered, the person altering it can implement a new license on this alteration. This new license for the altered work can be of their choosing. You can restrict their ability to license their new alteration of your work by using the SA element. They must license their alteration of your work with the exact same elements if you have included SA in your CC license. SA does not affect the current use or sharing of your work. Your license does. Future licenses created for altered works are affected by your use or non-use of the share alike. So, these four elements are blended into six Creative Commons licenses. Creative Commons typically explains these licenses from least restrictive to most restrictive. I think it makes more sense, in light of the character of copyright itself, to begin with the most restrictive or the most like copyright and allow the explanation to become less and less restrictive and less like copyright. So here are the six licenses. The most restrictive one, the most that would be closest to true copyright, would be the by NCND, or the attribution, no commercial, and no changes. In this license, you're free to share it as is. You can't make any money from it. You can't uh, distribute it commercially, but you're free to distribute it, copy it, use it as much as you want with these, with no changes and no commercial uses. A second Creative Commons license is the by NCSA. In this license, since the no derivatives is absent, you can make changes to the original work. But you cannot profit from it if you make those changes, and you must license it the exact same way, which means all future licenses, all future changes, cannot include any profit-making or any commercial advantage. So, this license allows for changes, but the license continues as is. The third license is the buy and see. The ND is absent again, so you can make as many changes to the work as you wish. You cannot make any profitable use of the work, but all licenses going forward do not have to be alike. So after this first licensing, adaptations of the work could be commercial and could be or could contain any sort of licenses going forward. The CC BY only applies to the very first work itself. The fourth license, the CC BY ND, is one in which no changes can be made, but you could use it in any way. You could even use it commercially. Um, this license continues on and on because no derivatives 
no changes or alterations can be made in the work. The work essentially remains unchanged, but can be used by anyone in any way as long as it's unchanged. The license here will continue as is ad infinitum. The fifth license is the by SA, which again allows for changes since there's no derivatives, um, since that, light, that part or element is absent. It can be used in any way, but as it's changed, as it goes forward, it must include this by SA um, in the license. Um, the fact that NC is absent, it could be used profitably in the future, um, but it would need to include this by SA license as it continues. The final license is the simple by license, which allows for any use, any change, any future licensing, as long as the attribution of the author remains intact. So each of these licenses, these six licenses, is built with three structural components or layers. Each license is written with legal language in order to function in a dispute or a court case. The legal layer is also secondarily described in more simple human terms, including symbols and descriptions. Thirdly, the licenses each have a machine-readable component so the computer systems can determine the license, as when an advanced Google search is enacted which sorts results for available public domain or non-public domain licenses. You could liken this to the voter guides in ballot propositions. In California, citizens can vote on legal propositions or laws that have had enough support to be placed on the current ballot. In the voter guide, there are three elements, if you will, the same. There is a legal law description in the voter guide that gives you the exact wording of the law. Most of us, though, can't interpret a lot of that. And so side by side with that is a simple voter explanation of what all the legalese actually means. It exists typically in a printed um, booklet, but also can be found online and as an online research can be searched for and uh, interpreted through computer uh, code. So each one of the six li licenses creates or includes these three layers or three um, components of the license so that it can be used online or um, in court or just in an understandable way by people looking at it. So finally, how does Creative Commons interact with other portions of copyright? Well, copyright law allows for fair use or fair dealing. Most countries allow some form of limitations or exceptions. Since Creative Commons doesn't replace copyright but functions within it or on top of it, Creative Commons doesn't impact exceptions or limitations. Creative Commons licenses only act where standard copyright might be more restrictive, not less. The Creative Commons license doesn't overlay where copyright allows for uses. It only acts where copyright would be otherwise, or where copyright would otherwise restrict uses. Also, since Creative Commons overlays copyright, when copyright expires, so would any Creative Commons licenses that would be in place. Works that pass out of copyright enter the public domain. Works can also enter the public domain by a creator's grant, but this could be changed by the creator 
at a later date. Creative Commons cre has created a license CC0 to help an author to permanently dedicate their work to the public domain. CC0 enhances the nature of the public domain dedication by making it legally set forever. So, Creative Commons licenses allow greater and more accessible sharing of creative works through legal means that also protect the rights of creators as they see fit. <laughs>